Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to use the router and scroll saw on this Celtic design. It's got the art there in the middle and the eternal locking knot that goes all the way through the old setup. And the idea is you're going to route out all the white sections in the middle of these. And then we're going to use the scroll saw to actually cut out these other places and free it away from the surrounding wood. And then once we've routed it all out, give it a nice tidy up, we'll decide if we're going to paint the inside of these or basically pour resin into it. Remember, those black lines will be left, so we'll have a nice barrier at either side. Now we've got it on this recycled pine. There's holes everywhere on this one. If I can turn it over, you can see that it's all been used. This came off a TV stand, I believe, or free wood that I claim through facebook free items page literally three or four doors away from me and i'll nip over collect it within seconds i've got it cut down and we'll get plenty of projects out of this and remember it's free wood that's the best wood to use for me unfortunately what you see is what you get so we've moved our template to where we want it knowing that we're not going to interfere with anything we've popped our carbon paper underneath you want a nice fresh piece of carbon paper and literally draw around this this is all part of the process for me. I get just as much enjoyment and relaxation in drawing this than just sticking it straight down. And some people can route over the top. Some people use acetone or thinners and put it in reverse and rub the back with a spoon. And there's plenty of different methods. Good old carbon and trace. You're not going to go wrong. That way you could use that template over and over again if you wish. Therefore saving on paper. And there's our little design there, look, that's come out really nice. Nice new piece of carbon paper, that's got nice and crisp. I've took my time to shade in the areas that we're going to remove, which are the inner sections, and then we put crosses on those for the sections we're going to cut out with the saw, and obviously we're going to take all that surround off as well. So we'll be left with that nice little project in the middle, hopefully filled with paint or resin, and we might put a bit of stain on the surrounding wood or you could spray it all black and if you just fill it in then that would really stand out nice but we'll see what the wood's like as we progress like i say just recycle pine i'm guessing just look a bit uh bit rough and ready but we'll see what it's like when we start routing into it as always for me nice little cnc bits now i call these cnc bits and i've had issues with a guy on one of the groups i'm in saying i've been using a cnc machine because i use cnc bits the full title is actually PCP, PCB Carbide Engineering Bits. That's just too much of a mouthful. So CNC for those. They do have a small shaft on them. A little 3.175 millimeter. So that will fit a Dremel. If you have a Dremel with the router attachment, that will fit your Dremel no problem. If you're using a quarter inch router, you need what they call an adapter reducer collet. And that basically is just a tube like that couple of slits in and your cnc bit slots in there nicely that is now a quarter inch shaft on it 6.35 millimeter if you've got an half inch shank on your router you obviously need the bigger adapter now it will fit nicely in there we'll set it to three millimeters i'll just have a piece of wood here you can buy depth gauges if you wanted to and you can mark off how many depths you want ever know once goes down three or four steps so literally the same thickness as your cnc bit just slits in there nicely that is the depth I will use, and that's plenty for putting resin in or paint. There's no need to go any deeper. You're only putting strain on your machine and on your tips without having to do two or three passes. So the router will go on there, we'll set it to that depth, and we'll use that to all our lines. I want this is inset. Basically, we're inside the bit we're going to cut out. So we want to cut to that line. If it was outset, we'll cut to the line on that side. I never route out on the line. But by the time you've gone down there, three millimeters. And then gone down there three millimeters the width of that piece remember could be adding up towards the two millimeter three millimeters by the time you go with depth you're going to narrow that bit so you always want to be up to the line and up to the line on that side never very rarely this project don't get me wrong would you route out straight on the line so we'll do all this line work inside all this shade of that area once we've done that hopefully it's all in one piece We'll simply remove the CNC bit. You will get a lot more projects out of that. While we're on, they're coming different degrees. 
20s, 15s, 10s and 30s. I will then pop on an end milling bit. These are fantastic. For the price you pay for these, I certainly have no issues with these whatsoever. And they're ideal because they do have a... They will roll out, shall I say, the side bits as well as the bottom. So by the time you've gone round with this, there won't be a lot of sand to do on that bottom section. And if it's not quite up to the line, we can come and just nibble away with that one. you see that. Obviously get one that will fit your project. And that literally slots into the same adapter collet. Set it into your router. Set it to your 3mm. And we're going to clean out all that section there. You might be tempted to come in and cut it all out first. I will certainly leave that. Because the more space you can leave for your router. Remember we've got to sit on there with that. And route out. So we need all this surrounding area. Just so your router, router doesn't get all wobbly like so. So do your routing first. And then once that's all nicely done, we can come with our scroll saw, which I'll show you near the time, and we're going to basically cut it all out. And then we'll see what we've got as regards to filling it in. Okay, we'll pop our CNC bit into our adapter collet, and we'll start routing this one out. Right, we've gone all the way around with those CNC bits, as you can see there. That was no problem. There was the odd one as I come across here. You feel it as you go across the grain, as so much the routing with the grain, if that makes sense. So I had a little bit of a, a little, little bit of a fight with it just across that section there. But apart from that, everything was fine. And we'll certainly sort all this out when we're going with our end milling bits now for the clear out. So we simply just remove your CNC bit from your adapter collet and we're slotting one of these end milling bits it doesn't have to be too big remember when it comes to these sections here we're going to have to get right into those corners there those sides so we don't want it too big that we don't want to end up rounding off those sections here so they'll be fine at that these are all eBay or Amazon remember there's different bits out there if you prefer to use spiral up cuts for your clear out and profile bits or liner bits for your lines i just prefer to use cnc bits and end milling bits for my little projects okay we'll pop that in remember we've, we've routed out some already so that's the depth we'll work at so we'll pop this in the router set it to that depth and literally just clear out all the shaded areas
Okay, everything's cleared out nicely with those end milling bits. They give a nice smooth bottom to it. And also you can come in and just nibble at the sides there. If any lines aren't just quite perfect. And you can see from mine, you can more or less still see the pencil lining. Remember, we've routed out up to the line, not on the line itself. Now the next stage for me is I'm going to cut this all out on a scroll saw. Removing all these middle sections as well. You could leave that on there if you wanted to. Let's just cut that down like so. And that would be your little project done. Once you've got your painting and a bit of varnish just to finish it off nicely. But I do want to cut all this out so you get the actual over, overall shape of it all. For that we're going to use a scroll saw. First of all we need to drill pilot holes. They're basically holes because we've got to cut out those middle sections. So obviously we've got to get a blade in there somehow. So you just drill a little pilot hole. Now personally... The bigger they are, better, because I have to feed my blades up. So there's no need to do like a really small hole. You want something that makes it easy of putting your blade in. Now, quickly on the blades. For me personally, I like to use a spiral blade. The teeth are spiraled, the full length of the blade. So they will basically cut in any direction. So we could feed that into our pilot hole there. Come across this section and let's just have that blade go around like that basically without turning that wood at all whereas your two blades which are pinned and pinless this is a pin blade these come on your more cheaper saws and they just hook at the top on a clamp and hook at the bottom remember you want you feel your teeth should feel smooth on the way down rough on the way up that way you know you've got them in the right way now you could use this on this one no problem they might just get it into that one there and that's the smallest piece and you could use that on there if you wanted to or there's a pinless blade these are on your more expensive saws and they're actually a clamp that clips on there and clips on there these are ideal really smart i struggle with these little straight pin blades but that would fit in there no problem and you could cut out that section with these but obviously we pinned and pinless you've got to feed your wood into the blade and then you have to turn it feed your wood and then turn it again and feed it all the way around so a lot of turning and twisting something like this you would actually be better cutting it in half first just to give you enough room to turn it on your saw but for me spiral blades unfortunately i do have to use these adapter clamps and your blade fits into there use an allen key to tighten it up and that basically hooks at top and bottom as if it's like a pin blade and it works fine on my little drapper scroll saw but for future if i was going to purchase another scroll saw i'll certainly get one that takes pinless blades okay we'll cut this out quickly and then we'll go with our little dremel flexi cable give it a little tidy up and then finish off with a sanding down and just have it all nice and just round those edges off and then we'll look at the next stage
Okay, that's all nicely cleaned out. That wood's come up quite light once we sand the top of it. And we've done the front and the back. That little piece there, I've actually just tried out a light teak dye, which we're going to use today. Originally, I was going to paint, spray it all black and then uh, put our resin inside there. Basically, clear red, put that out, and just a simple black running through the rest of it. If resin is not your thing, you should paint this now. You could paint all your colours in there, whatever you want to do, and give it a little sanding down, and that'll make it nice, crispy again. And then you can paint your side bits afterwards. Slower process, or you can put your stains on. But for me, I'm just going to use a wood dye, light teak, that one. It's going to be a simple case of brushing it on. I do have a darker teak if I can't, uh, if it's not working as, as planned. But it will be a simple case just covering the full piece like so. And get inside those areas where the resin's going to go. Remember, if you had already painted this and sanded it down, you can get away with just doing the side bits like so. And that's certainly no issue. You can definitely do it that way. But for me, because I'm putting the resin in, I'd rather just do the full piece. On a previous project, I basically left it like that. You can just see that bit there. When I poured my resin in, you could see the dark stain underneath. So to play safe, we just cover the full piece, getting all those side walls, remember? Because we're not going to fill this to the top with resin. We're literally just be just a, a mill off the top. So you can still feel it with your fingers. But we definitely want all those side walls doing like so and obviously not forgetting all your side bits there this wood die goes on really easy and it's really quick i do use this a lot just for the simple reason that painting is not one of my favorite part of the project to do so i just find it easier and a little bit lazier just to throw this in once that's all nicely dried and if you can put resin in but say resin is not your thing you could use paint just as easy Okay, I'll continue with this, and then when we come back, this will be nicely covered. Okay, that's all nicely covered with that light teak, as you can see, and it's all dried up, no problem whatsoever. We've got all the sides done nicely. Now, the next stage, before the resin goes in, remember, we're just going to simply put a red resin mixed with red acrylic paint and a black to finish it off with. Now, this project will be done. Just before that, we're going to spray on some varnish. I have no preference. It might be Paint Factory one day. It might be a 151 another day. And it might be a bit of polyurethane, whatever's left. I've been known to empty this and finish with something else. Remember, just little indoor pieces, these. So we don't have to go too over the top with the finish. Just enough to give it a bit of a shine. And also, this routed out areas. When we put your resin in there, or well, if you were putting paint in, what we don't want is to bleed into the side walls there. So we want to keep that nice and crisp. Remember, we're not going to sand this down afterwards. Once that resin goes in, because we've already sprayed it with the varnish, this project will be finished. So we want to make sure it stays nice and crispy around the sides. So we're going to seal it with our varnish, hopefully. Like I say, there is the wood sealers you can purchase. And you literally brush that in there. And when it dries it seals the sides but i'm just going to hope that the varnish will do it with three or four coats a bit on the side as well we might struggle getting those inner areas but that's just the way it is this will look different again once we get a bit of spray on we'll let these first couple soak in nicely i'll go outside with a bit of fresh air and then when we come back we will go and find find some resin Okay, that varnish is all nicely dry now, and you can see it's got a nice shine on there, and that's going to be enough to seal all this wood, hopefully. The sides could be done a few more on, but I'm happy enough with what it is for now. So now it's just a case of putting our resin in. This probably will be one of the quickest resin projects I've done. Now the resin today, as always for now, is Vista 1. Two part resins, like they all are. You have A, your resin and B, your Ardner. You basically just mix the two together. Just keep an eye on your mixers. Vista 1 is a one-to-one -one mix, so one part resin to one part Ardner. So whatever you put in of the resin, you want exactly the same amount of your Ardner and just mix the two together. Some resins are two to one, three to one, four to one, and so on. 
some resins are deep pour resins some resins are just designed for quarter inch plus something like that so just keep an eye on some resins you even measure by weight this is by volume i basically use these little plastic party cups beakers they're ideal because they have little grooves on the side and i just count up we'll go for five today that will be plenty for the full project of a and obviously we want exactly the same mark so five i of b put them two together and let you just mix them into the one container they do say get a third but i'll just normally just pop b into a because it flows a bit better mix it all in and then for coloration we're going to add acrylic paints just a nice simple crawford and blacks for me these paints are fantastic we'll mix them in with the resin so we just want a nice red for the art and just a simple black eternity loop that's going to run the rest of the piece at one time i was going to do a red there a white and a blue and a mixture of yellow but it just got a bit too crazy so sometimes just keep it simple so i'll mix the resin off camera mixing wise i'll just use these cheap party plastic spoons they're ideal because they do have a little little lip that runs the full length of that so when we've mixed our resin with our acrylics we can just come in and just trickle that into there nicely over the full piece and then we'll have a little cocktail stick just to help it on its way so we just feed it around once it's all gone in remember literally to the top it will shrink down slightly once it's curing and then we'll get a lighter and literally just skim over the resin once it's in and that just helps all those little bubbles to release okay so i'll mix this resin off camera and when we come back we'll be ready to fill it in okay there's all our resin nicely mixed up remember we want to split this into two because we want so much red and so much black so just pure guesswork i think that's gonna be more than enough hopefully to do our red section first so we're just going to pop in our acrylic paint there is dyes out there i think i've got a bag full somewhere dyes and ink i can just find them no i'm actually throwing them all away to be honest so i'll just stick with acrylic paints now this might look orange on camera but once you go back down to the shed i can show you it'd be red i'll just drop a bit in like so off there we go they do so work on 10% ratio of the amount of resin you're using. First myself, and I'll be honest with you, I've never done any 10% of anything. I'll just put in so I think it looks right. And if it's not dark enough, I just simply add some more. And I've never had any issues of any resin not curing or setting proper. So we'll speed things up a little bit when we start filling this in. Like I say, it's probably one of the easiest resin projects I've ever done, just filling this in as it is. So remember, we've got our little scoop on the end here. So we just go nice and steady. We can drop a bit in there like so. And we can see what that looks like. And if it doesn't look red enough, we can simply just add a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to be happy with that. We must have got lucky first time around, so just steady away those syringes you can get all them plastic patets and fill them in that way i'm just quite happy to do this i'm going to mark off quickly the one the areas i want to fill in just so we don't fill in one of the other ones by mistake and there's that one there as well so there are three to do with red I feel like i'm missing one somewhere that one there, that's obviously the same section. Okay, it will find its level eventually, but get your little cocktail stick and you can just help feed it along like so. Remember, we're not overfilling this. We want it just to the top, but not quite full. Okay, I'll fill this all in. And when we come back, we'll skim over with our little lighter and then we can put it to one side.
Right, that's it. That's all nicely filled in. As you can see, we haven't gone right to the top and it will shrink down just a little bit as it cures. But hopefully we can still feel the routed out section. Now we'll just put a little cover over this for 24 hours, just stops all those dust and flies hanging around. Before that though, remember you just want to skim over with a lighter like that. And that just helps any of those little air bubbles come to the top and disperse and hopefully disappear. And I will come back in another five minutes or so and just give it one more skimming over the top. Remember with your resins, put your gloves on, want a nice proper mask that's designed for resin work and plenty of ventilation. Please don't follow me by example. Right, so we get a little tray for this, put it to one side for 24 hours and then we'll come back, we were back down in the shed and this little project should be finished. Okay, that's it. This little project is finished. Now it's less than 24 hours later. That resin is all nicely cured in there. We've had no issues. We've got no bleeding whatsoever. If I can just get in there, just a couple of seconds. There we go. Everything's nice and crisp. No problem whatsoever with that. That's come out really nice for a nice little, little project just to fill in a couple of hours on a Sunday afternoon. Now remember, it's on recycled wood. It comes in at half an inch thick and it measures roughly 10 inches by 9 inches, we'll call this one. Remember, we use our CNC bits for the lines. There is better bits out there, I would say. And different bits. You've got to just find one that suits you. I'm quite happy with those little CNC bits or carbide engineering bits, I believe they're called. And end milling bits, just for the clear out. And then we came in with our light teak wood dye. Just to stain that wood down. And we finish off with any little varnish gloss spray we can find. Just to give it a nice little shine. And obviously, could we all put resin inside, mixed with acrylic paints. We just wanted to make sure we sealed all those side walls there. And you can see from that, it's got a lovely shine to the wood. And also, we've got no bleeding on there at all. We'll just try again, see if we can get it in. There we go. And you can see how crispy they are. No problem whatsoever. That turned out really nice. And that's it. We are done. So, Celtic art with eternal loot running through. I just actually like the design itself. I'll hang this on the wall. No need for hanging purposes. A little pin nail in there. That will hang fine. You get a little base for that if you want it freestanding. But for me, this little project is finished. Thank you very much for watching.